Hey, what's going on everybody? I am here at Starfront Observatories uh, behind me. Uh, you can see my newly completed telescope setup, which I'll be making a video uh, about soon enough. I wanted to make this video to sit down and talk about some of the criticisms that are frequently discussed about remote observing. And there's three big ones I kind of wanted to touch on. One being that remote observing takes the fun out of astrophotography. Uh, that it counts as cheating and that it's not real astrophotography. And I kind of just wanted to sit down and have a discussion about those criticisms and give my thoughts on them. So the first one I wanted to talk about the most is that remote observing takes all of the fun out of astrophotography. And I think this is probably the most important thing to discuss about when it comes to remote observing. For a lot of us, uh, me included, a lot of the fun in astrophotography and astronomy is getting out under the dark skies with your own equipment and seeing what you can capture with just you and your telescope and being present physically and i understand this quite deeply because i am one of those people i do really enjoy getting out to do astrophotography in person with the telescope quite a lot and i do it as much as i can but the issue is that my ability to do it, or when I can, is almost never because life. People are busy, uh, life gets in the way, and it's not so often that one can make the drive out to a place with dark skies, let alone own a home with a backyard to begin with. I've been living in apartments for the last four years, so I've never had a backyard with which I could do astrophotography from if I wanted. So my ability to be there in person with the scope has been quite limited. And I think this is also the case for most people. And remote observing, obviously you don't get that present experience, but wouldn't it be great if you could do the hobby you wanted to do most of the days out of the year instead of once every month or once every two months? I would rather do my hobby every day than so infrequently that I almost never do it. For a lot of people in astronomy, the fun is having your telescope, interacting with it, messing with the gear, tinkering, and you still do get to enjoy in this. When you do remote observing, it's just a little bit different than what you would experience for backyard or travel shooting. For example, I like to think of planning for remote observing as having equally as much tinkering as with the travel setup because it's almost like you're building your own space telescope or space mission. You have to be able to assemble your whole rig and make it functional um, autonomously and remotely at a distance. So this requires a lot of planning, a lot of tinkering, a lot more than what would be required out of the backyard or travel automated setup. And this is a whole other side to gear tinkering that you only see when you do remote. And I personally, I find it equally as fun um, as with travel shooting. So I think this is an aspect a lot of people are missing when they level this criticism at remote observing. So remote observing also opens up more ways to have fun in the astrophotography process. Like I was saying, a lot of people derive their enjoyment from the hobby with tinkering with the gear, but a lot of us get our enjoyment from the hobby out of editing images, producing art, the more creative aspects of astrophotography. And I think we can all agree that editing data from dark skies is way more fun than editing data from a light polluted backyard. So what remote imaging does is it gives you that potential to have all of your data that you edit always be of that top quality. And it allows you to just have more fun editing, producing images that are amazing and being able to creatively express yourself more. And this is honestly where I get most of the enjoyment out of astrophotography. I like the creativity of the editing process the most. And so there is no substitute for that good data in the process of making those images. The other aspect of fun that remote observing provides to you is that you can actually be creative in your subject matter, your composition, or any of the things that you want to do. Because remote observing gives you the logistical ability to get more exposure time than what would otherwise be possible. Um, and with the dark skies, it gives you access to a whole new set of objects that you would just never be able to feasibly photograph uh, from a backyard or by travel shooting. There's dozens and dozens of faint IFN objects, faint emission nebula objects, 
You could do big mosaics, um, tons of exposure time. These are all creative possibilities that you can only get once you have the exposure time that remote observing provides you. And this is also something that's really, really attractive to me, especially in my photography. Remote observing gave me the ability to spend time to explore the night sky. I've probably spent multi-thousands of hours just taking O3 images of random spots, and it's only possible because I had those thousands of hours to dump into surveying. What you trade in the experience of being with your gear, you gain in your ability to be creative in editing, in photography, composition, subject matter. Remote observing makes all of these things much more logistically possible. And it really just depends what are you trying to actually get out of astrophotography. And there's no wrong way to get anything out of astrophotography. If you love tinkering with gear, being with your telescope under the stars, that's equally as great as, you know, wanting to take the very best images possible. There's something to get out of every aspect of the hobby. Another common criticism that's leveled at remote observing is that it's not real astrophotography. And I think this is um, a pretty slippery slope argument because what is real astrophotography? You know, if you didn't grind your own mirror, is it real? Or let's say we look at, you know, the professional observatories like the VLT, Mauna Kea, those can all be ran remotely while they're on the tops of the mountains. Does that make what they do not real astronomy? Or what if someone has a permanent telescope installed in their own backyard and all they have to do is hit a button? Is that real astronomy? You can see there's, there's unclear reasoning here about what's real astronomy and what isn't. And to me, all of it is real, whether you're in the backyard, whether you're remote, whether you're traveling, all of it counts as real astrophotography. And it's true in some ways, when you do astrophotography, it more closely resembles hitting a button. But the thing is, every type of astrophotography presents its own unique sets of challenges, whether that be the travel shooter setting up their telescope or the remote imager dealing with complex troubleshooting issues that can't be done in person. They all have their own challenges and shortcomings that are different, but that doesn't make any one type of astrophotography less real than the other. All right, lastly, there is a growing sentiment that a lot of people consider remote astrophotography to be cheating. And I think this sentiment is born from the idea that remote astrophotography is lofty, it's inaccessible for most people, someone born in a city with less than great sky conditions who can't afford a remote observatory will never ever ever be able to get as good as photos as that remote observing person and those feelings of unfair i wouldn't say are ungrounded um, there is a lot of unfair things in life we don't get to pick the city we're born in we don't get to choose to be in Bortle one skies and i don't like that aspect of astronomy it's not very democratized. It's highly dependent upon where you live, how much money you have. And so in the past, I would agree with this, that, you know, it's unfair because it was not accessible to the majority of people. And that's what we are trying to change out here. We want to make these dark skies, the ability to remote observe something that's more affordable and accessible to the broader audience of astrophotographers. So maybe if you don't live, in a place where it's possible at all, now you have an excellent option to actually do that observing. And like, it really would not be fair to be an astrophotographer born in New York or in London. It's absolutely not the best place to be born for that and no one gets to pick where they, where they reside in that way. So yeah, it's, it's not fair. And I, um, I was born in Phoenix, Arizona and I grew up in Cave Creek and I always had 300 clear nights per year of shooting and I was only a 45 minute drive away from dark skies. And I always like to say that I was kind of a product of the place where I come from. I'm only a good astrophotographer because of my ability to do astrophotography. I wasn't hampered by where I lived. In fact, I probably lived in the best city to do it in the USA. And I don't think that that's a coincidence that I've gotten so deep into astrophotography while also coming from a place like that. I would like that not to be the case. I don't want someone to have to live in Phoenix to be able to do as much astrophotography as they want. I would prefer it to be an option 
for everyone. So that's why this place exists. That's what we're working on. I don't think remote observing is cheating, but I think the feelings that lead to people thinking that are valid and I'm doing what I can to change that. All right, lastly, um, as a side note, I just want to say there's no reason why you can't do your in-person astrophotography and your remote astrophotography at the same time. I love doing astrophotography in every single way. Um, I love the gear tinkering, I love the editing, I love the shooting, I love being out under the stars. I engage in astrophotography in literally every way that there is to do it. And there's no reason why you have to be an only remote observer and why you have to only be a backyard shooter. Um, you can take advantage of all of these things at will and you don't need to put these self-imposed barriers upon what you do and how you do it. Uh, you can do whatever you want, whatever makes you happy, and I don't think you need to put those limits on yourself. If you want to stay as a backyard only shooter or a travel only shooter, I think there's something cool about that. More power to you. Again, it's, it's a hobby. No one needs to tell you how to do it. No one needs to tell you how to have your fun. It's a free world. <laughs> there's no reason why you can't do both. What I've found for me um, in my astrophotography is that broadly speaking, um, most of my DSO, deep sky imaging, efforts are all done remotely at this point. And that's just because it's the most efficient way for me to get maximum exposure time to get the best images possible. I can do it very, very frequently this way and I'm able to get tons of hours of exposure very quickly. And so that's why I do remote. It's for me the best way that I'm going to get my images to the highest quality or to explore space for new objects. So it's the best way to do it. It's what the professional observatories do, and so I do the same thing. But that being said, I also travel shoot. Um, I have small rigs that I take out. I bring out the tracker. I bring out, you know, small 135 millimeter lens, DSLR. I do all kinds of shooting, but my efforts are allocated in a way that's more efficient for the experience that I want. So like when I travel or when I go to dark skies, I'm enjoying more of the nighttime sky. Uh, I do more visual. I do more wide field DSLR stuff. I'm trying to be there to experience the nighttime sky and not to mess with my telescope. And then when I go to actually do deep sky imaging, I do it in a way where it's all remote. It's more efficient. Well, it's not all remote because I live next to my remote telescope now, but you see what I'm getting at. Um, the astrophotography that I can only do in person, I do in person. The astrophotography that's best done remote is done remote. And so I kind of split these efforts up in this way. All right, well, those are pretty much all my thoughts on the subject. The world of astronomy and astrophotography is really diverse. There's so many ways to do it. Milky Way, solar, visual, backyard, travel, remote. All of it is amazing. All of it's great. I think whatever way you engage with astronomy and astrophotography is a net positive for the world and that uh, all of it is really, it's all really great. So do whatever you have fun doing in astronomy. Just do whatever you have fun uh, doing in astronomy. I'll catch you in the next one when I talk about the monstrosity behind me.